Hello and welcome to the third episode of Breakfast Brainstorms. I'm Mark. That is Ray. Yeah, sorry. (laughs) Today we're going to be talking about gyms, giving you ideas for your gym, um, how you can improve your social media and uh, following and help your um, clients and customers engage with your social media in your gym. So, ideas for gyms. Do you Uh, want uh, yeah, uh, on the spot again. Uh, uh, all of these are just us, um, me and Mark, kind of putting stuff out there to to you lot. And uh, hopefully, if obviously anyone's watching that so far been involved in a football club, a calf, and today a gym, uh, that you might get one or two sparks of ideas. Um, and obviously, if you need help uh, with any of those, or pushing on any of those, or driving any of those, uh, Mark and I are happy to help. Um, so today, gyms. Um, I don't know about, so I'm not a massive gym goer, but actually I'm not a gym goer at all. Um, I'm quite sporty and competitive, um, but I don't really go to the gym. Um, so I was kind of briefly trying to kind of think a little bit um, prior to this call um, of what what would be good or what would entice me as a non-gym goer to engage. Um, and I think, I think it's kind of got to be um, more of like a try and understanding uh, and more of an understanding. What I find, especially on Instagram at the moment, is there are a lot of fitness pages, a lot of gym, a lot of individuals that are self-branding about being a PT or whatever. Um, so standing out, I feel, feel like it's got to, you've got to create some kind of welcoming um uh, engagement of, of environment so something that you're either teaching them um so that they understand how to either use the equipment properly uh, maybe i was thinking maybe a, like a live like every day they someone does a live um at a certain point and goes through a, a bit of equipment in the gym um so one if you're not comfortable using that piece of equipment because you might go into a gym and want to use that bit of equipment but you might not be comfortable with how to or don't want to hurt yourself or not doing it properly and someone to take you through like a live every single day of a different bit of equipment which means you can vary your training music regime hmm. yeah absolutely and when you start the gym you don't you know for the first year you're not really sure what you're doing uh you, you're sort of looking at other people trying to get an idea of what they're doing um and it's too scared to ask the pt and uh it's just it's just can be a bit intimidating when you start the gym and then you get no nowhere because you don't know what you're doing and and you get disheartened because then you and then you drop off but if if you're being shown by video if you're being shown by uh by an online coach or or someone that you trust through the gym um, and via videos or via free stuff uh then yeah you're going to be much more likely to to like the gym for start um be much more happy in the gym much more comfortable in the gym and hopefully you'll get somewhere um again this is me just kind of thinking off the top i know every all gyms and fitness people kind of do a massive push straight after christmas yeah um which obviously is a great uh, it, it, it makes sense because people are looking for that um you know that uh straight out of new year want to get a new you know get get into something um but i think there needs to be almost somewhere along the line some a gym or some gyms could do a another push in like a little bit later february and march um, and a really good deal because what happens is and it's a I, I had someone on a podcast before basically saying gyms are set up to make you money they're basically making money when you don't go not when you do go yeah. um so when you're paying on a monthly subscription and in week month one you go every other day because you're really keen but then a month two three four five six you go once a week or not at all because it's that that passion or desires died out um mm. i just i don't think that's a good deal and so a gym that can cut a really good deal of like a one month off one month on kind of deal or something like that would really kind of help people to be more consistent rather than just in january doing really well yeah or he's into it or even just checking in with them like recently like regularly if you checked in with someone make sure you know how they're going um obviously if they're not at the gym maybe it's a bit hard to do that or you've got some sort of text system or email system where you just email them say hi how you doing be a bit more personal i think that's what commercial gyms are lacking these days uh you, you definitely got definitely yeah you definitely got some some more niche gyms that are really really friendly some great people there um i know my gym's quite good with personal uh, put the personal touch they can still everyone can be improved everyone can still improve it could always be a little bit extra it could always if, if someone hasn't been to the gym for a long time i know it's probably not in the gym's best interest but you know just see how they're doing you know maybe email them or, or just yeah just reach out to them and see if they need help maybe maybe it's something that 
they're not feeling comfortable with maybe they just don't know like you say don't know the exercises that need to do and that way you can get the uh get the gym owner or, or get the pt to help them out for a free session or, or even not free you know help them out with a session and they're more likely to come into the gym and use the facilities uh, but, but yeah. by doing that they'll be more or happy to use the gym. they recommend it to other friends they'll they'll share it around you know this gym really helped me get on my on track and maybe you see some fantastic progress and you, you know you could share that around definitely um I, I would put, um one is uh one thing i've noticed is the change in people's opening hours that i think is uh, really good to be flexible for working people and different shifts and all that kind of stuff so having late nights and early mornings um is really good but like open days or open sessions where yeah, yeah. people can go as a group as well like you could be thinking of joining with a couple of mates and you can all go together and go around at the equipment rather than go in there yourself again it's just about taking that 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 daunting first bit away from them and making people feel as comfortable as they can um going in going around with the group um showing all the equipment so that any you know you don't feel silly asking silly questions if you like not that i believe in silly questions but you you know you don't understand something so you ask something in front of people um but you know you're all in the boat together rather than yeah. don't ask questions when you're on a one-to-one because you don't want to seem like you don't know anything Absolutely, yeah. It takes away that sort of intimidation that the starting intimidation that everyone has when starting a gym. Um, I think that's one of the main things when when um, I on my, channel, my, my live feed. Uh, I think that's one of the main things when you're starting a gym is that that initial push, and this little imit- um, intimidation that you get, and initial, um, you know, just insecurity that everyone gets when they start a gym. There's a there's a massive thing. But yeah. I think if you, um, but, but, but for everyone, not even just for gyms, for anyone we've talked about, really, if you're collecting um, people's information when they're joining or whatever, I d- mm. and it goes back to what you were saying with personal touch, like wishing someone a happy birthday goes oh, a long yeah. way. Like you've got their detail, you know it is, it's got to be, yeah. it can almost be automated or as much as I hate to say that because obviously it almost, you're like, well, it doesn't make sense. But to say like, oh, come along, we'd love to see you down at the gym today or tomorrow after, you enjoy your birthday today, hopefully we catch you at the gym tomorrow, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, enjoy, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, why not? Like, or even like come come and down and have a slice of cake at our cafe um, and work it off at the same, like a free slice of, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, th- there's a, you've got the information anyway. When people sign up, they're giving you your date, their date of birth that you have to put into a system these days anyway. So why not use that information to per- give them a personal touch and, and say, you know, today as, as your birthday, we want to, um, you know, you to come down and um, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Or even, or even if it, it depends what type of gym you are. Even if you could, you're a really hardcore gym, you could have a no rest of the wicked, then you like birthday card and just like, so get up and go after it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I think if, if the, the, I was going to say something, I can't remember what it was. That's what happens if you do this in the morning. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Is. Definitely. Oh, I think about personal touch. Um, you have to yeah, have the pen and paper. Really. Yeah, I'll come back to you in a minute. So, uh, have you got any ideas for gyms on social media or gyms that can help? Um, um, well, Twitter, I think, would be really good for a gym to do Q- Q&A. Have you, have you been part of Q&A sessions on Twitter before? Uh, um, but, I've, like... Uh, so basically at a certain time in the week uh, the same person on Twitter uh, for example a gym in this case will say we're going we're going to be live asking any uh, asking you questions and obviously trying to help answer them they ask a topic so they'll be like what do you find the hardest machine to work for example mm-hmm. that might be their topic then anybody on Twitter that follows their gym types answers responds to that question and obviously they can engage with their customers to see obviously what what is the um t- uh, type of machine that they find the hardest to use if there is a you know an overwhelming one particular um bit of equipment then there's no reason why they can't do a whole thing on that uh, you know equipment again as a follow-up to those people uh, yeah. and again there's ways of following up after that twitter q a um it's they're really i think they're really good and again you say they're you know uh, between 7 p.m and 8 p.m for an hour and you ask any questions from your gym that you want to ask your clients it gets them engaged it gets them answering questions but their answers also give you information to be able to follow up with them later on yeah you're getting what you, you're getting what your audience wants you're getting that that answer uh or well, you could do it on Instagram as well with with Instagram stories. You know, they've got that question and answers feature, and then you could turn those stories into posts as well. So it's more more 
content, so that's quite cool. Again, okay. you got the vote. You got the vote as well, haven't you? The polls, so you can ask loads of like Instagram story polls. I think it'd probably be more natural for the gym to use Instagram because of the sort of people. Every everyone's on Instagram, but the aesthetic reasons as well. Uh, it, the pictures you can show people things. Um, a lot of, uh, there's a massive fitness community on Instagram, and uh, you can also see where your competition's at as well. You're pro- probably on. They're probably on Instagram. Uh, you want to place yourself higher than them or better than them. So um, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think there's there almost is something as well with something like Instagram is like follow someone from day one. If you can find someone, if, yeah. You, yeah. if you can find someone who joins your di- gym and you are doing Instagram stories on them from day one in the gym, taking them through everything, like a massive case study um, <laughs> of them joining the gym, like literally signing up. You see them signing up because obviously they're going through that process. They're being inducted through the machines. Then they turn up on day one. Even even the, even the days where they miss it, you know, the story of just like a tumbleweed going through the car park because they never turned up for the gym that day. Like, you know, following someone and see, one, seeing their progress, but seeing also you get to then ask them, what was your struggle today coming to the gym? Oh, well, I had to go to work early. So that room ruined my routine or, oh, the trains were delayed or I couldn't be bothered. I had a late night last night, whatever it might be. And you, you see that, the, you know, everybody who's trying to get to the gym are also experiencing those problems. So then it, it gives the, the people that are feeling those or are going through those like, oh, I'm not the only one who, you know, messes up my routine or whatever. Absolutely, yeah. That, I think that would be a hard to find person. But yeah, I think that would be, it'd be a really, really good idea if you can find someone that would be willing to do that. Um, but obviously on social media, there's a lot of things that gyms can do already and gyms are doing. Um, just highlight a few. There'd be Transformation Tuesday where you show uh, a person that is filling your gym or, or out of your gym and then they come into your gym and then they've transformed their body, um, whatever weight loss or, or gain muscle or whatever it is. Um, just showing that story and then writing a lot about their story and, and the struggles and there's a lot of good points to think uh, good points to the, a lot of text on instagram a lot of paragraphs yeah, yeah, yeah. like to read despite it being an image-based platform um so yeah the tell a story is the main one i think for, for gyms and, and people in the gyms there's so many stories in that gym if you think about it you know what people do um what workouts are doing why they're on that road to that workout why they're doing that certain thing and then obviously you want to tell stories of the PTs as well. Um, I know a lot of gyms do that already, but you could do video uh, video introductions or um, just make it as friendly as possible if you're that sort of gym. Um, but then I suppose you always want your PTs to be friendly, but then you, you could always, you need them to be motivational sometimes as well. I think a lot of gyms um, lack that and they're, they're sometimes friendly, but they're, they're not really interested in what you're working out or your, your workout. If you had a gym that are motivational, and, and you, they could help you. I mean, my gym's pretty good at that. Um, they're, yeah, they're, they're always happy to help. So if, you, if you've got motivational and friendly PTs, that's probably the way to go. Just show that on Instagram. Um, try to think of small stuff. You've got uh, obviously quotes as well. That's, that's probably the, one of the things that a lot of fitness people do, a lot of uh, fitness influencers do. Actually, that's a good one. If you can get fitness influencers to your gym and that you know, the audience, um, Definitely invite an influencer down and then, yeah, yeah. for one day a week or a particular time, it will entice other people that follow that person to, to turn up to the gym. If yeah. nothing else, that they might bump into that influencer, but also they'll be in a gym, so you'll be one step further. And if they're a really big influencer, then you could potentially you know, give, them, give them, uh I don't know, maybe a, a discounted membership to try and train there all the time or, or uh, special facilities or... And just, because they, they're going to pull a lot of bigger audience they're going to pull a load of people to you so say you had someone like the body coach coming to you uh the the, the lean 15 guy i can't remember his name something wills no uh, i don't know but anyway he, he yeah if he if you brought him to a gym you know got all those mums that follow him uh all of those all those people that are wanting to start their fitness journey all of the people that are looking for clean and healthy meals um you can get him in your kitchen maybe doing some do some cooking you could um yeah, yeah that'd, that'd be good you could, you could get because he's very you know um healthy eating based if you had someone like the lean machines or, or yeah get, getting someone in your kitchen giving you recipes on social media that'd be cool um yeah, or, yeah definitely. but make sure your branding's on it make sure you're the face of it as well uh yeah yeah, yeah. Like, was the whole, um, to the people. You know, like um, so and so takes over our stories. You know, you yeah, get an influencer yeah. that takes over the gym stories, so they yeah. are actually on their account. Um, but people obviously 
uh, getting engaged by the influencer. So yeah, um, being taken over by an account is is definitely a good, or well, letting them take your account over is a good one because it keeps your branding, keeps your fol- your followers, but obviously hopefully brings over the people that you want to see more in your in your gym. So yeah, that's definitely, and also local influencers. You know, I know you just talked about a big big, uh, but if you've got someone who goes to the gym regularly and you are part of the gym, you should follow that person because they go to your gym anyway. But yeah, if they've yeah. got a big following naturally, uh, because they're you know always in the gym or whatever, um, and it might not even be 100% gym related, but there's no reason why you can't, again, use that local influencer, the person that comes there already, to entice more people to come to your gym. 100%, yeah. If, if there's a guy that works out six hours a day, <laughs> I know he's saying this because there's a guy at my gym that does that. Uh, he, he's crazy. He's built up. Um, and if, if he's there all the time, then you know start start treating him nicely and uh, get, getting getting him to post off on social media or, or say good stuff. But even just reviews, I think reviews are really good for gyms. Saying yeah, that testimonials, yeah, yeah. People saying that they're a friendly gym, uh, they're nice people. You know, you've got good equipment, you've got good stuff to help out. Uh, it's, it's really important as well. It's like restaurants. You know, people will go there based on the reviews. Um, but there's no reason why uh, I'm assuming that if you can build up a connection, your gym can build up a connection with the local businesses as well, um, yeah. that you're e- even to invite the people in the businesses down still to charge them, but like a reduced rate maybe, um, but for your quiet hour. And then like the whole of a, a particular company can work out for an hour and use your facilities and, and, you know, use your shower or whatever and leave. And, and you could do that occasionally, like a different company every month or something throughout the year. So that's only 12 in a quite, again, it's a quiet hour. They get well being for their, for their company and their, their uh, work so they're obviously looking after their staff because they're doing something fitness related you get yeah. people into your gym which has a potential to be a conversion so if you get 20 people up the road from a local office come in and you, they've almost hired the gym out for the for the for the morning for an hour they do their workout they're not going to come back again throughout the whole year but you've got them there so it might even if one of them then converts to a monthly person who starts to join the gym because you've offered some kind of reduced rate or whatever then you've converted one more person do you know what i mean and then and then they might bring a friend from work yeah let's start going together and it's two people so um again i i have this thing about businesses helping other businesses and i think that's a massive yeah. thing but businesses need to be doing more for well-being uh, to look after their staff Absolutely. Gyms want to get more people in their gym. That's you know that's the how it is. So why not combine and work something out like that? Absolutely. The lunchtime offer or lunchtime uh, deal to get people in the gym uh, would be really really good. I think that I think that I'm not sure if it's all gyms. Gym different gyms have different times where they're busy and quiet. But some gyms are quiet in the lunchtime, and that's when you want to get people in. Um, obviously, different businesses have different lunchtimes as well. So you can, have, you can have say. X company has lunchtime at two o'clock. They can come in and do a class. They can have certain spin classes or certain workout classes that they feel comfortable doing as a, as a business yeah, on their own. Um, or even if PTs go to the business and do do the class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool. If, if, yeah, if yeah, yeah. And I think that, you, again, you can pitch it in so many different ways, obviously about health and fitness, but you can also pitch it as almost like a team team workout day. So you go and take your team down there um, and you all work out together, which means even if you're not part of the gym, you're all in it together. I've never been to, like me, I don't go to the gym, so I wouldn't have a clue how, where to start. But if I was in it with other people at work, like, all right, I'm in it with other people at work. Like, let's just... Yeah, Absolutely. obviously you'll have someone there that knows what they're doing obviously the PT or or whatever that would take you everybody round but yeah well, um, it'd be a way of definitely getting you know staff moving and active and I think it would be really good for the team and the business both I think for, for people that sit at the desk all day one of the main things is mobility and just keeping people moving uh, and, and not getting stiff because if you're sitting in a chair all day you get a strained neck if you're sitting hey David <laughs> okay, I'm just jumping in it's from <laughs> Sweden so He's tuning right. in. So. Do, you, do you own a gym? That's, that's the main question. Yeah. Um, do you go to the gym? Yeah. Or own uh, one? So, yeah, the, I think the, the, one of the main things for office workers, and if you are going to offices uh, to promote health and well being and, and gym and fitness, uh, is mobility. You've got to get people moving. If you're going into a gym, you could do a half an hour mobility uh, workout with them whilst they're on the lunch break. Really nice, easy stretches, um, and you don't, see, don't feel silly doing them with your colleagues. Uh, or they could come to your gym and do a mobility class. I'd be interested in doing a, uh, a mobility class, if I can speak. Um, yeah, just just 
stopping that aching and pain so you get the general sort of repetitive strain injury that you get from working in an office, clicking on a mouse or your neck or your back. It's the main ones. Um, and moving your legs as well. I think when I'm sitting at a desk all day, my, my hamstrings go because I'm not using them at all. You know, they're just on the chair uh, and not being worked at all. Um, so, yeah, just, just the general mobility stuff and the hip flexors are one of the main ones. And I think one of all of the, I think with all of these things that all these kind of ideas that we're kind of throwing out there is make them your own, see what works for you as a, as a gym really. Yeah. Uh, because obviously not every single one of these ideas is going to be uh, relevant to you, but hopefully there's one or two that spark something else and maybe another idea for you. Um, and also try, try something for a while. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Like you haven't really lost anything. Um, the worst thing you can do is stand still with any of these things that we're talking about is just go, Oh, these guys are talking. They don't know. I don't even go to the gym. So they're going to be like, he doesn't even go to the gym. What does he know? Like, no, just, you do. Just yeah, to, yeah. <laughs> um, you do, but I don't. Gyms are watching and, and thinking, well, I'm not going to listen to these two, but uh, oh, yeah, yeah. at least half of um, us. Then they, they're no, going to be like, um, hey, I'm getting there. You shouldn't wear, you know, your big jumper a little bit. <laughs> Go for that tight knitted uh, uh, t-shirt, mate. Um, but we've got, uh, we, but but these ideas are just to get the ball rolling. Really, um, you've got to find for a gym what one maybe sounded good for you or worked for you. You know, if you're if you're in a, a gym where you don't have many businesses around you, which I can't necessarily imagine, but then that one isn't going to necessarily be relevant. But yeah. you can, you should, um, with, with all of these ideas try them if you can and if it works then you're, you're onto a winner if it doesn't you haven't lost anything you're still at the same stage you're at now so yeah. and most of these don't shouldn't really cost you much money what we've talked about really yeah absolutely i think the the community one we, we always it's always good to get in your local community um but also if you're starting a gym or you're fairly new you want to see what other people other gyms are doing in the area uh like there's a 24-hour gym uh, and there's also this gym that I go to, which is a bit more personal. And it's not 24 hours, but it's still really good business hours. And you know, I rather go to that one because you, you get that personal touch, you get that, that friendliness. And um, it's not commercial; it's not a massively commercial gym. And it's just, yeah, it, it's just so much nicer to to have that. Even though the equipment, the other one's pretty good as well. It's, you know, similar equipment. But you, yeah, and you if you know what your thing, if you know what your thing is as well, like you said, the one that's open later and the one that gets gives a personal touch. If you as a gym know what your USP is, yeah, um, then really hone in on that because, like I said, there's so many gyms, so many fitness things out there now, especially on Instagram. You need to really try and get as niche as you you, you can. Absolutely, yeah. Um, there's a few things that you can do as well for for general general things uh, on social media. Just just content creation ideas. Uh, I wrote a few down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got uh, yeah. What we talked about this already slightly. Uh, what's in the gym? So you're sharing stories and who's in the gym. Um, you've got weekly and daily workouts. Uh, I think that'd be really cool. Uh, if you're not doing it already, a lot of gyms are. You should probably doing it um just sharing ideas and tips from your pts make it again making it personal hello and welcome to x uh, we're x gym um, i'm mark from that gym i'm a personal trainer da, 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 da. um here new career, there, mark. New career. <laughs> i thought about it um, <laughs> here are some here are some tips uh, on how to get a stronger back how to get a better squat position um so yeah just just certain workout tips or, or even Warm-up tips would be quite cool. A lot of people skip the warm-up and it's really important. So uh, warm-up or stretching tips and stuff that people miss out in the gym or even nutrition tips and that would be quite cool. Uh, nutrition stuff and getting, like I said, an influencer chef or, or even if you fancy yourself as a bit of a chef, um, just just uh, meal prep tips, uh, general, general tips. <laughs> uh, tips and ideas and, and stuff that can help your people in the gym. Uh, you've got transformation Tuesday. You've got quotes. Um, although with quotes, you don't want to go too heavy. I don't think it depends. Depends what sort of gym you are again. But if if you're all quotes, then people, I, it's hard to tell. Some of those accounts do really well. But if you haven't done it already and you start doing it and that's all you do, I think people get a bit spammy and, and tend to switch off. So I was, if you are doing quotes, I'd mix it up with the stories and mix it up with the videos of your training. Definitely. And, and mix it up with other other content as well. Find a way as well to make it stand out as yours, yeah. Rather than just a generic quote. Um, yeah. Obviously, 
you're you're quite big on this, but so am I. Like, find your brand. You know, yep. using the same colours, typeface. Um, you know, finding a way to include logos or pictures of your uh, your own gym to make it relevant to you, rather than it always um, taking a a stock photo of a you know of the gym and then having to use that because that, although that's great, it also will be much, so much more personal and um, relevant to your brand if it's if it involves those things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, if it was just putting your logo in the corner or, or putting a bar along across the bottom uh, with, with your website address or, or just using your brand colours, like you say, uh, over pictures, um, overlaid, or even just switching. Yeah, you get so many graphic styles you can do. Uh, it's a speech to graphic designer. Hello, Blue Dead, sound of Credit UK. Any more ideas? Go to Simply Credit. Uh, <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to plug, haven't we? Um, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, quotes, mix it up. Uh, healthy eating recipes and one thing that I haven't seen a lot of gyms do is products and deals but reviews of them you get yeah. products and reviews, supplements and um, but on, made on YouTube but you don't get to see them from many gyms you see them from a lot of influencers and we call to see them from a gym um, and, and like a group of people or a few trusted PTs in your local area because so if you're going to because obviously a lot of personal trainers do take supplements and they do uh, try a lot of things on the market so not not taking steroids on about steroids but they do try a lot of things um like yeah, yeah. Powders and blue yeah. workouts and it'd be cool to know from your own pt and someone that you recognize to, to and a trusted figure uh what's good and what's bad and maybe on your website you could create that into a blog uh yeah but really like, yeah you've got to realize as well where you, with that the only thing i say with that is that everybody's different so what works for one person wouldn't necessarily work yeah. for someone else and i only learned this recently working with someone who you know it is intensely kind of in the gym that you could there isn't one size fits all so you do you need to play around but the basic foundation tips of do's and don'ts is definitely a great a great way also yeah. just just put a point out as well clothing like um, buying gym cl- your set gym clothing, and it might not necessarily be your logo. Um, I know lots of people do that, but we've talked about before about having a gym slogan that people then can wear all the time. Like you're obviously rocking Creative South right now, which is yeah, really cool. was, and it's it's promo for Creative South. You know, really, you, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Go I mean, on, I, the, so the reason I wear this shirt is because it's so comfy. It's such a, a smooth, uh, yeah. soft shirt or jumper, and. Um, uh, yeah, if you can make something that people want to wear because of the material, but also just because it looks good, I think it looks all right as well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah exactly. So, so yeah, it's all all about. I mean, I mean, gym gym stuff. Obviously, it gets a bit sweaty and spending over time. But um, if you if you're wearing, if you're having, you've got to pick certain materials that don't do that. Basically, so obviously, football shirt material like 100 percent polyester probably isn't the best stuff because uh, it gets it, get, it does get disgustingly sweaty and smelly. Um, Maybe, yeah, I'm uh, thinking about things that people might wear outside of the gym, um, yeah. you know, as a, as a once they're finished, because that's what's going to give you traction around. When people see the same slogan around, they're going to oh, wearing the hoodie or wearing that jumper or wearing that I don't know, even jack zip up zip up jacket after the gym. Then they're going to be recognise it more than if you're just wearing in the gym, because once they're in the gym, everybody around there is already there. They're already in the gym. They know about it. They're aware of it. You're trying to expand outside of that that vicinity and to do that you need to be wearing clothes hats whatever it is around around your area for that gym but it doesn't just again doesn't necessarily have to be the logo it can be a slogan that relates to it that if they ever looked up i really like this brand i keep seeing people wear it let me have a look and then it really leads to oh it's a gym i think what would be really cool if you created sort of a, a team a hashtag team whatever so my, one of my friends is a personal trainer he's, he's created a hashtag team shed side which Basically, he, he used to have a shed uh, in his old house where he yeah. he bring pe- pe- people to work out in um, team, yeah, and it evolved into this hashtag team shed side. And we've got a group of people on uh, yeah. on WhatsApp, and we all bought t-shirts. It's all on the back of the logo on the t- on the t-shirt, and all the logos on the front. Um, but yeah, if you can create some sort of team, some sort of culture within the gym, people are more likely to wear it. But a tip for choosing clothing what are people wearing in the gym already and what are people coming into the gym with uh, so say you're sorry yeah I've got, got to remember the live feeds there I keep forgetting that um but yeah so say people are in the gym have a look at what they're wearing are they wearing hats then produce some hats with your logo on it produce some hats with some slogans on it are they wearing t-shirts or hoodies do that thing do what they're already wearing and they'd be more <laughs> like 
do it. A great point in the live feed from David, actually. He said about it goes back to the personal touch. Um, yeah. And he says about this, um, you, people don't know whether to take you seriously if you're a spam account or not, because there's yep. so many gyms and fitness things out there. It, you, yeah, you don't recognize. So the only way you're really going to uh, differentiate between if you're, you are being spammed and just, you know, liked or followed by whoever, or if someone's really engaged in you is if they point out something in particular, if you are actually uh, um, authentic as you can be as a gym. Yeah, absolutely. And that goes for any industry that, again, is not just the gyms. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think yeah, it's one of the main things in anything. Uh, so yeah, we, we talked about reviews of, of supplements, but reviews of clothing as well. Uh, if you're doing your own clothing brand, um, obviously it's hard to compete against Gymshark and that, but yeah, you, know, you can always start somewhere. Um, but just reviews will get your awareness as well uh, of, of, every, of everything, really. Um, social right. media. Yeah. Any more that up? Yeah, anything else? Um, no... <laughs> Not maybe not right the second, but I was thinking actually, if anyone does have ideas are outside of this, or we have many more ideas along the way, especially for this particular, then we'll add it into the comments in the video that comes up later on. So if you missed any of this live, don't worry. Yeah. Uh, both Blue Deer and Simply Create will post it later today. Um, again, if anything, uh, yeah, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, is that right? About right? Yeah. yeah um so yeah get in touch with us if if you any obviously watch it there if you missed any of this and you think it might be helpful um if you're jim and you want any more ideas or want to get in touch um for us to help you out getting some of this ball rolling and getting some of these ideas off the ground we'll be happy to help you getting again get in touch with mark where can they find you mark uh, at blue deer design on social media and um probably wherever you see this posted if you if you're watching via my account or hello at blue deer if you want to email me for any graphic design work or just any advice tips on graphic design or, or how to make your brand more consistent and right. um so, well um uh, let me <laughs> Um, at underscore simply uh, create underscore on all social media accounts. And again, you can email me at info at simply hyphen create dot co dot uk. Um, and again, yeah, we're happy to help get the ball, ball rolling. Yeah. Create, uh, create some ideas. Um, I, I kind of specialize in video. So if anyone, any gym wants to get started on their video making, I can obviously help with give you some starter tips or, or, or anything more than that. But yeah, it's been great. Another morning. We'll be back again on live tomorrow at 7 a.m. But again, we'll be posting the videos out later today. Every day in November. All right. Oh. See you tomorrow. Nice to see you later. Thank you, people, for joining. Take it easy. See you later. Bye.